Introducing Toolbox version 2.0. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, the Toolbox is a collection of all the tools that I have built for myself to be a better Business Central consultant, to be a better Business Central developer. And uh, these are tools that I use on a daily basis, and we have just recently packaged up a lot of new tools uh, into the version 2.0. Uh, release. So let me run through what's actually in the toolbox uh, now. Um, and if you want to see more details, there are more videos uh, on the channel about the specific areas in the toolbox. You can always try it out in the sandbox if you want to. So here goes. First of all, there's a new menu. Uh, we ran out of space on the old one. Uh, so now there's a dedicated menu. Um, and we also made a change to the license, uh, meaning that you can now use the toolbox in sandboxes and like in Docker images that identify as a sandbox without having to uh, purchase a license from us to use the toolbox. You still need a license if you're using production environments, you still need a license if you're using on-prem systems that do not clearly identify as a sandbox. Um, anyway, here goes. Uh, the uh, the toolbox main functionality is the ability to run code. Um, so you can write a piece of AL code, simplify the AL code, uh, but sophisticated enough that you can do all sorts of daily tasks with it. You write the code, you click run, the code is executed. Uh, no longer have to, you know, Fire up VS Code and connect to a sandbox and build a new extension, download symbols. And uh, when you got it like the way you want, then upload the extension to production to run it once. Uh, here you, you fire up the toolbox in production, you make the, the changes you need, and you're done. Um, super low friction. One of the new things in the toolbox is the ability to have non toolbox users. So a traditional toolbox user is somebody like me who can write AL code and is a super user uh, on the system. But what we've seen is that, myself included, a lot of people have started writing pieces of code that is of general use, uh, generally useful for a broader audience. So you can now go in and say, well, this program is available for public usage, meaning that a non-toolbox user can open the toolbox and only see run programs and then they will get the list of the programs that they are allowed to use and there's a way to set up permissions also for that um, and they can just run it they cannot not see the code they cannot change the code um, so that brings out toolbox programs to a broader audience part of that is also a, a new ability to uh, to store an excel sheet with the program so if you have excel uh, you can have an Excel sheet for settings and so on, and then the Excel sheet is stored with the program. Moving on, uh, the next column here, you can do batch processing. That's a, uh, a super advanced uh, or simple, depending on, on what you want to do, uh, search and replace functionality. So you can go in and say that I want to change the credit limit on um uh, these let's do these three customers perhaps so we have selected three we can see these are the current uh, uh credit limits i can write here and say i don't i can just say change everything to sixty thousand. Uh, but i can also actually do um do math and say, okay, the current credit limit times 1.13, so at 13%, we verify that that makes sense. Run, we can now see that this one goes from this to this and this to that and so on. Uh, I want to validate uh, and execute. Boom, that is done. The batch processing even keeps a, uh, a history of uh, of, of what we did so we can we have a lock saying this was what we did and we can do undo if we want to do an undo the next module is the object inspector the object inspector is a way to look at 
tables, look at pages, encoders, and so on, so on. But you can also run uh, a given object, and when you run a table, you actually run the table in edit mode. Uh, standard Business Central have the ability to run any table, but it's only in read-only mode. So here you can run it in uh, in edit mode and change any field you want if you are a super user again moving on to the next column uh, remote packages is a way to pull data between environments so let's say you have a sandbox or you see a production then you you have set up in your in your uh, in your UAT environment, they want to pull into production, then you can define uh, what you're gonna pull, where you're gonna pull it from, and uh, and then data is transferred. This is very efficient. Uh, you can transfer thousands and thousands of records in, in a very short amount of time. This has been used to basically copy an entire company from, from A to B. If you are, otherwise you cannot copy a company one environment to another environment with Microsoft tools, um, but you can do it with this one. The last piece here is one of the new one for version 2.0. It's an ability to store your setup data in GitHub. And what do I mean by that? Well, when we're working with source code, we store our code in Git. We store our changes. So every time we make a change, we make a release, we update our source code repository so we can see who changed what and when and what was the value before. And we can have multiple versions of the same data. It's called a branch. Um, with this functionality in the toolbox, you can do the same thing with your setup data. Uh, meaning you can either just use this for keeping a more sophisticated change log of your setup data, or you can have a branch like we have here where we got the main branch is our development environment and we have produ a production branch, a UAT branch. Um, and right now my system is on the uh, main branch so we can look what's in there and we can see the payment terms is uh, updated after we last committed because we just made a change in one of the payment terms. Um, so I can commit that. Uh, and then GitHub is updated, but I can also say, well, let me switch over to the production. So if I look at payment terms now, we, it says test 75, as we just made a change uh, a couple of minutes ago. But if I go to the production brands instead and say, well, let's switch to that one, go back to payment terms, if I make the spell, then apparently that's test 23 because that's a different set of data. So you can you can have multiple versions of the same data and you can f put it into environments and, to, and, and switch around as, as you want. So you can say, okay, let me switch over to the new setup we have in UAT or go back and forth. Uh, you can have different tables in different branches. If you wanna do that, that's probably better to do a different repository. Many options for uh, working with data as if it was code. Um, so that's a quick eight, nine minute overview of uh, what you can do with uh, with my toolbox. Uh, go try it out uh, in the sandbox. There are links below and uh, let me know how it goes. Uh, thank you for watching.